Hello, yes, welcome back to DC and Has running another review of Ali's products again today. Yes, it's a complicated time period for me right now because my first exam is tomorrow and I've had to do a shitload of study for it. But it's always nice to take a break and sample some of the finest food Aldi has to offer. Anyway, first off today, Demora French Twists Cheese. Yes, these are one of the more fancy type products Aldi has to offer. They're three dollars a piece. Yes, real butter puff pastry, real cheese. Yes, they're really going for the real ideal on this one. Oh god, that was a terrible rhyme. That wasn't even intentional. What the hell is this interesting? Fabric Fabrique en France. I'm assuming that that means a uh, product of France or something. Which is interesting considering that Aldi is in fact a German company. A German company selling French products. Looks like Germany's reign of France isn't exactly over. Someone ought to change that. Store in a cool dry place. Once open, store in an airtight container. Yes, made in France. There it is. Made in France. Made in France, distributed by Germany. Uh, so many jokes could be there, but I don't think I have the thought speech for a funny one right now. Uh, LDs of stores, one sergeant's road, mission zoo. Please dispose of packaging thoughtfully. Yes, yeah, so I guess I've got too much to ask, but we don't even. I mean, it's an interesting, they're using that as a design. We don't have bins like that in this country. We, I mean, we have bins with holes in the side, but they've got like tubs in the middle. We don't have ones that are just like big wire frames with holes in the middle. So I think that's the kind of thoughtful thoughtful disposition that you do. You do use a packaging in this country. Maybe that's some kind of German or French tradition. No artificial colors or flavors, and no preservatives. And that, that's what that leaf means, no preservatives. I'll remember that on every advertising container I ever see. If there's a leaf, there's no preservatives. Serving per package, approximately nine. Serving side, 16G, two sticks. Wheat, flour, butter, milk, fat. Ugh, milk, fat. Milk, water, milk proteins, 9% nine, 9 cheese. I guess that's all right. Milk, salt, culture. <laughs> Would you believe it has culture in it. Yes, so this German French product has plenty of culture in it. I suppose it does in terms of a historical etiquette. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, anytime people are talking about uh, exploring a wider vast of cult cultural cuisine, they can try this because it has culture in it. Skim milk powder, salt, yeast, malted barley, flour, sugar. Yes, I think that sounds all right. Three dollars. Can't really go wrong. All right. Oh, they didn't smell too bad. They smell uh, really buttery, if anything. Uh, at least that's okay. Let's see. So, yes, they do look twisty, but flat on the back. Oh, there's quite a few penis jokes coming in, but I'm not exactly sure if this is a schlong or an animated schlong from a two-dimensional cartoon or something. Oh, God, I'm just not not feeling it today, fellas. Oh, I suppose I better get into it. All right. So it does uh, sort of collapse really easily. There's uh, plenty of crumbs. Mm. Let's just see how it tastes. Mm. It's got a real soda covering. Salty. Don't even know what soda is. Shit, I am just not thinking it today. Fuck! Hmm. Hmm. See, usually cheese twists are these actual um, these bread type products that have um, you know cheese on them. They've been twisted and shit, kind of like a pretzel, which you can get at a like a bakery or something. But these ones have quite a similar taste, even though they're a lot more uh, a lot more of a biscuit type product. Yeah, they, um, hmm. 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 Cheese is okay, but main taste should come purely from the salt. Hmm. 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 They do have a real nice texture and good consistency. Hmm. They're crunchy. They're not weak, so they don't fall apart, and, um, they're not too strong for you to actually make your bite through. Yeah, these are, geez, these aren't bad at all. These are actually quite, quite good. Hmm. 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 
I think the thing I commonly find with a uh, cheese twist a lot is uh, sometimes uh, they'll use Dijon mustard, which I hate. And that leaves you with a terrible aftertaste, or sometimes um, it just leaves you with a real greasy feel. But there's um, it doesn't appear to be any grease in this kind of thing whatsoever. It's just like... It's pretty much just a solid biscotti, pretty much, oh, or biscuit. I don't know what biscotti is or why I'm using it in the terminology. Um, it leaves you with a good aftertaste, just a sort of a slight salty feel, kind of like the feel after you uh, eating French fries, except it's not uh, overloading in your mouth. It just kind of sits there, just um, reminding you of what you've once eaten. <laughs> and it's actually rather nice. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, that's certainly a good product. Mm. So, and you do get you do get quite a few. So you can serve them at dinner parties and shit. And um, I don't know what the general price range is for something like this, but yeah, I think it's really worth. It. Yeah, I'd say that's certainly worth the three dollars you spend on it. Mm. Mm. All right. Next in line, something to wash that down with. Orangi sparkling orange drink. Yes, I believe this is another Regal brand product or something like it. Um, oh, I can't seem to find it on the actual packaging. Of course, it would be the same basic Aldi company, so it's safe to assume that it would be similar. Yep, yep, see, it's all another Aldi product there, specifically made for Aldi stores. See, unless Regal only applies to the, to the brand of Collar or something, or if they have their own brand of orange, and this is something new, well, I don't really know then. Anyway, Harangi, it's so clever because it's orange with a second E. That second E is for eccentric or electric or oh, epididymis or oh god I don't really know or oh, whatever it is it's just not a there you go you put it there and it's orange. Orange sparkling orange drink. Sounds like something you get out of a two dollar store. Anyway orange soft drink. Thank you for clarifying. You know I've never actually understood why they call it soft drink. I mean there's nothing really soft about it. It's uh, very fizzy if anything Kind of fizz is a bit rough on your tongue, it's not going to soften anything. Um, that's before, 3rd of the 8th, 2014, so it's got a long, got a good long life on it. Uh, yeah, there's... Oh, and a long green barcode on the side. How appealing. It's not too much a joke about in the advertising mail, let's just give it a shot. Epilepsy, that's what I was trying to think of. Ugh. Trying to make some, something, another E word I could think of, and epilepsy was the idea, but that didn't come to my head. Oh, jeez. Anyway, so, yes, looks like not too much fizz has come out of the top. Let's just see how it tastes. It certainly smells kind of like Fanta. Fanta mixed with that carbonated kind of orange juice and a bit of soda water. So it pretty much smells like, you know, Fanta with elements of something else. Hmm. Well, hmm. Pretty much tastes how it smells. It doesn't uh, have the distinct taste that Fanta has. It doesn't have the uh, same level of uh, sweetness or strength in it or anything like that. Um, it kind of tastes like uh, one of those tropical kinds of drinks where they taste like soda water mixed in with a lot of uh, a lot of sweet fruits and kind of and such. Um, hmm. Yeah, flavor's not uh, too strong. It's okay, I suppose, but it's uh, not one of their best soda products. Uh, mm, uh, the kind of emphasis comes, it's, I don't know, I, the only feeling you get when you really drink it is it's kind of like, kind of like when you drink soda, soda water on its own, you just get that huge bubbling sensation, and then there's a bit of a sweet aftertaste. That's the kind of thing you get from that. Mmm. Yeah, it's uh, not the greatest. I mean, 73 cents is not too bad. But, you know, it can't compare to their actual cola product or anything. And it can't compare to the more mainstream brands of orange soft drink and such. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, that causes a difference between the fact that it's a sparkling orange drink and an orange soft drink. But I think at anything, it's a sparkling orange drink. Because it tastes like sparkling water with a hint of orange. Not the most satisfying. Not some of their best work. But it uh, depends if you're destitute or not. Now, yesterday at Aldi's I came to a very, very interesting product actually because as it is Christmas coming around soon, they of course have to come up with sort of Christmas brand stuff, things. They got 
Dominion Naturals, the same person who bought us the Sour Stilts. Christmas Stocking, with three bonus lollies. A 33 pack with three bonus lollies. I don't know where the relevance of that actually comes into it, but um, as you can see, there's a wide range of uh, sweets and knockoffs and such, and uh, yeah, 14 Sour Hard Candies, four Gummy Burgers, eight Chew Bars, five Fruit Flavage. <laughs> As you can see, the sherbet's had a staple right through it, as if it's been crossed out. So it just says five times seven grams of fruit flavored. What could it be? And two things of ten gram puppy ends. And altogether, this only supplies you want with one percent of your daily energy intake. And it's quite a large quantity of all, so that's kind of interesting. Um, let's see what's been ticked. No artificial colors or flavors. No preservatives. Low fat. With three bonus lollies. I'm still trying to figure out what they mean by that. They don't really clarify that the best, but uh, well, let's find out. Yes, yes, I'm opening my presents early. Well, well, Santa, you still owe me that fucking bite. There you go. All right. So let's see what comes out first. It looks like they've been sort of stacked in a particular order. Gummy burger, not for individual sale. Yes, this pretty much looks like a routine gummy burger. It's got the ketchup, the strange yellow thing in the middle, which I believe is supposed to be the burger or something, and then the big ass pickle. The only thing is, the actual burger bun look like they're, um, God, terribly faded, kind of like uh, the color of a VHS tape that's been in the garage for so many years, but it's just gone and faded. Ugh, just not that rich in color at all. So let's just see how it goes. Okay. And nothing holds it together. I know normally the things aren't exactly held together, but um, there's no real structure to it. And, damn, it sounds sounds pretty rough for a thing that's supposedly gummy. Well, let's just see how it goes. Okay, it's very rough. I'm not having the best time chewing it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Definitely not one of the better gummies. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The flavor is very vague and it's very well overshadowed by the fucking rough texture. Jeez. Mm. Mm. Kind of have to force yourself to eat this kind of thing. Or maybe you just have to break it into parts. Then again, if you have to break a burger into parts, then what's this all been about? Well. Uh, okay. Well, they're not exactly off to a good start, I must say. Hmm. God. Oh, God, it's uh, one of those gummy, those gummy lollies are supposed to be, be, like, soft and satisfying. This one is very rough and leaves some kind of, I don't know what the right word is to describe the aftertaste, but it's like, God, it's almost fuzzy. It's like you're eating a gummy sheep or something. Oh, jeez. Anyway, moving on, because that was not a good start. Okay. There's these, I think these are the crossed out sherbet that we're being talked about. They all come in these, uh, in these fruit tubs. Yes. Uh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. It's a banana -na, next to a banana -na. I think I'll drop the banana -na right now. And then this pink berry. Look, it has the shape of an orange or a mandarin. But uh, newsflash, an orange is supposed to be orange. Maybe I'll sample that one to figure out what the hell it's supposed to be. Yes, this one's a pineapple where they've cl cleverly played the green top off. God, they've got all got these retarded, disfigured faces on them. God, they're supposed to be like reactions to the sort of sourness, but they look like... Oh, they look like a blue waffle has gained consciousness of itself and come to life. <coughs> Not satisfying. And lastly, the lemon, the sourest of them all. Oh jeez, it's just, just stares into your soul with these kinds of things. It's got one big disfigured eye and one dot of a figure or something. Oh jeez. Uh, not impressed, Aldi, not impressed. Uh, okay. So as you can see, there's a sh the sherbet sort of lets off a lighter pink color, which is like halfway through. Sounds like it's almost clumped together or something. Anyway. Yes, yes, it makes a mess when you try to open it. Yes, yes, you hear that sound? That's the sound of a bunch of sherbet clumping together and coming to life. Uh, let's see how it tastes. Mm. 
some of the most subpar shit I've ever had in my life. God. Ugh. See, at first it just tastes like some kind of salt or something, but then as you get down to trying to figure out the, what the flavor actually is, it tastes like dishwashing liquid. Jeez. It's like this kind of shit is supposed to clean your mouth or something. Now, I don't, don't think the purpose of buying a lolly or buying several in this case is to clean your fucking mouth. Jesus Christ, I thought you were disfigured enough on your face, but your flavor. Oh, God. So, Ali certainly can't handle themselves when it comes to sherbet. I think that's important. Next in line, all these uh, sour little sucker lollies. Kind of like warheads or something, I suppose. Oh. Ooh, watermelon. That's my favorite fruit. It's one of the first packaging I've ever seen to advertise watermelon in red, actually. They're always like either green or pink or something, but I'm guessing green is apple. Sour, sour apple, yes. Then, which, which we made pink. Strawberry. Doesn't look like they supply any blue ones, so no blue raspberry or anything. Anyway, they're usually these sour lollies, they come in a sort of a brand of two. They're either like a very sweet lolly covered in a thin layer of a, some kind of sticky sour substance or powdery flat sour substance. This one doesn't appear to have a, much of either. That could, it might have a vague powder substance or that could be left over from that fucking dishwashing liquid I just ate. Well, let's see. There is no soundness on it whatsoever. So, this, hang on, let me get another one. This sour candy is not sour at all. Maybe it is in the um, sour apple case, because it's a lot more easy to do that to an apple, but. Nope. Not sour. Like a vague watermelon flavor. Something a little bit sweet, but, hmm. God, I'm getting a bit of that dishwashing sense again. It's kind of like, Throwing a slightly sweetened dishwashing power ball over and over again in my mouth. Oh, I'm certainly not. Ugh. I'm certainly not recommending that either. Oh god, those are the kinds of things you just keep in your bag for a day when you're so desperate for a bit of a rush that you're willing to eat something as stupid as that. Anyway, God, luckily we're coming to an end of this. You haven't done so well so far. Here's another one. Uh, Okay, now they've got, I I'm done with the watermelon for the day, that's the one time in my life I'll ever say that. Anyway, they've also got grape, chew bars. There's not much more to say, is there? They don't really look like bars, they don't have writing on the package. Oh my god, they've gotten sticky somehow, so I'm not really sure how to trust much of this. Uh, well, let's just find out. Yes. The chew bars has got such a poor substance that it comes off when you attempt to open the packaging. Ugh. This isn't uh, not anything, I don't even think this is worth the effort of opening. Ah, Jesus. See, it just falls apart. I'm always being thrown off by this, and it doesn't have a much of a rich color or anything anyway. Oh God. Ah. Uh, let me just get the plastic off of that. Again, you can't get plastic off without getting the fucking bar off. Alright, let's just see how it tastes. Mm. Well, that has a pungent smell of sort of grape bubblegum. Mm. But it tastes like... It tastes like grape gum that's been already chewed and spat in the dirt. Yes, that's not even, not even a joke. Ugh. God, the texture actually feels like it's in the dirt or something. Jeez, it's not. Oh. Uh, God, I'm gonna enjoy having that taste in my mouth all day. Jesus Christ, Aldi, you put yourself down today. You were doing a good job for a while, but you blew it. Uh, God, I might have, a, might have a bit more of that to wash the crap out of my mouth. Let's just see how it does it. Okay, that's a good sign. So, Orangi works as good mouthwash for other Aldi products because the spark, it sparkles enough to sort of dissolve the flavor and then there's a, that slight orange flavor that's left over afterwards which masks the taste of, which masks the taste of di two forms of dishwashing powder and pre-chewed grape bubble gum that's in the dirt. And finally of all, uh, 
No, I think I might go for the sour apple on this one, see if they can get it sour, right? Lick and Dunk Lollipop Popping Candy. Now, they have these kinds of things in other brands. It's those, uh, you know, those kinds of, um, lollipops that, um, there's like a foot on the end. You lick it, then you dip it in the popping rocks, and then it comes out, and it's all, tastes all good and shit. Uh, yes, Apple Flavor Lick and Dunk Lollipop and Popping Candy. As you can see, there's an exploding green bomb up there. Yes, Al-Qaeda better not get a hand on this, because uh, they could just lick it and dunk it in the World Trade Center. And some kind of winking apple with a sparkle. So that wink kind of suggests that you're tricking us in some kind of sense. What are you tricking us about? Is it, is it not actually apple flavor? Can you not actually lick and dunk it? Or is there no lollipop and popping candy in there? Oh, and on the other side, it's the same thing. Contained milk. I really don't understand how milk actually comes into this kind of thing. All right. Okay, well, since you have to tear it midway, the lollipop can't be that big. It's a thumb. It's a thumbs up with a dent in the middle. <sighs> See, at least uh, the other one had the decency to make a convincing looking foot. This looks like... Uh, this looks like someone's... I don't know. This looks like a hand job, really. The fingers coming around, and here's the penis. It's just, if only the hands could move back and forth, then maybe it'd be a bit better. Anyway, so you can see there's a very little pop rocks actually in there. Alright, let's hope they can succeed with one thing in this bag. Doesn't really taste like anything, it just tastes like sweet green. Okay. See, Usually when you lick something and then stick it in the pop rocks, they start to pop automatically because they pop as you get a bit of uh, get a bit of moisture on it. As you can see, they just sit there like the leftover cocaine on Tony Montana's nose. Hmm. Okay. Well, there certainly is a little bit of popping going on. Hmm. Unfortunately, the popping spreads the flavor throughout your mouth, and it's not the most satisfying flavor. Again, they've created some kind of washing detergent and put it in a bag and marketed it as a fucking lolly. Well, damn it, Aldi! Looks like you're able to you're able to succeed with singular products, but not when you put a bunch of the same thing and market them to children. So, kids, do not ask Santa to get you that for Christmas because that is not a satisfying thing. Anyway. Interestingly enough, although Christmas is still a few months away, they're just getting rid of their Halloween products now. And they're selling these white these white chocolate ghost lollipops for 69 cents. For those who don't know, 69 is a dirty number. Anyway, so this ghost has sort of a crescent-shaped eyes and mouth. It, eh, Turn them upside down, and it basically just looks like some kind of arch or something. It wouldn't uh, it'd require the physicality to sell it. But this ghost seems to be happy, which is strange, because ghosts are supposed to be like vengeful spirits, which is why they still are ghosts. Of course, you're not going to try marketing vengeful spirits as a form of food to children. From Dairy Fine. Oh, I can hope for something from these, because Dairy Fine have blamed you with decent chocolate in the past. Um, contains milk and soy, made present peanuts, tree nuts... <laughs> Sure, plenty of nuts come from trees. I'm not sure what kind of trees solely have a have their own brand of nuts called tree nuts, but anyway. Uh, dairy fine, yeah, there's not too much to say, except there's another there's a ghastly type of figure on it. Uh, sort of a vague attempt at it. Anyway, they had this one and a chocolate spider. Because the chocolate spider was regular chocolate and white chocolate's a lot more hard to get right. So I figured I'd try to see what dairy fine can do in terms of getting white chocolate. Anyway. Well, it's not the best type of white chocolate. Hang on. Mm. Mm. I guess it's alright. Considering the stands I've had set by the poor products of today. I mean, by which I mean solely that stocking. Mm. I guess it's okay. I mean, there's a hint of chocolate and a bit of a 
sort of dusty aftertaste. Um, could be better. But then again, as we've learned today, could be worse, a lot worse. Mm. There you go. Oh, yeah, you chew him right and he ends up looking like a sperm. Uh, find me a vagina to enter. I want to turn into the next. I can't say the next anything because no one today in the entertainment industry is all that interesting. Save from a few people like Jennifer Lawrence and such, but the more popular figures such as, I don't know, One Direction and Katy Perry who thinks she has the eye of the tiger when she does not, are not figures really worth following and such. Uh, Alright. I need heard this now. As Michael Scott would say, his cap has been detected. Mm. Well, for a brief base of chocolate, it's okay. It's not something you want to eat on a consistent basis. I mean, you shouldn't be eating chocolate on a consistent basis like that anyway, because it's a fat thing, it can kill you. But, better to die from that than from all those shitty lollies I just sampled. Let me just show you everything from today. So, all together, this has cost me, God, I've got a maths exam tomorrow, this shouldn't bother me so much. All these shitty lollies cost me $2, $3, which believes, I believe equals 5 five sixty-nine. haha. ha. Plus 73. Okay, God. Let me just estimate and say that's uh, 640 something. I don't know. Anyway, for six dollars and forty something cents, you can get all this. But you knock away that and that, and you can still be satisfied with these French twists. As honestly, no, I'll probably have a few more of those to sort of take the flavor of everything else away. But uh, these have been satisfying. That's more than I can say for anything else in this fucking box of laundry detergent and uh, orange tango shit. Mm. Mm. There we go. Okay. So the French twist, twists are even better because the consistency and flavour and shit mm, can actually mask. Can mask the tastes of dust, dirt, and laundry detergent. Hmm. I'm definitely buying those French twists again sometime. No, don't think I can say much for the rest of the products. Anyway, thank you, goodbye.